Welcome to the Scarlet Blue and You podcast. I'm Lauren Yaus, your Scarlet Blue and You host and the HLG Alumni Director. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm coming to you from the Burt Studio on the HLGU campus. HLGU has been educating future educators since we opened in 1858. 2022 is an especially special year for the department because they are celebrating 40 years since they began preparing teachers for certification. As part of the celebration, the HLGU Education Division has a special reunion weekend planned for October 7th and 8th. And I have two very special guests with me today to tell us all about this event. Past Chair of the Education Division, Distinguished Professor of Education, and Director of Assessment, Dr. Julie jackson Alby, and Dr. Jane Schaefer, who is past chair of the Education Division and professor. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thanks, Lauren. So glad you came on. <laughs> so between the two of you, about how many years of education experience, teacher ed experience, do we have? I just asked Jane out there, and I think we have a total of 82 years of That's education amazing. experience. <laughs> makes us sound really old. No, it makes you sound <laughs> wise and so knowledgeable, and we're so lucky to have you guys. Well, thank you for joining us. And so the division is celebrating 40 years, which we just said is not when the program began. Yeah. So why? what are we celebrating at the 40-year mark? Okay, before... Um, 1978, um, well, quite a ways before that, the accreditation for teachers was given by different entities. So it was given by um, boards of education. There was not a unified uh, set of curriculum. So um, that's why it varied. So it wasn't like state certification from one local place. Okay. So in 78 is when we started our four-year teacher education programs. So it moved from a two-year college, and we have been, I found an interesting quote, because we've been in 1909, during the summer months, LaGrange College began offering a summer program to prepare students to teach elementary and high school. This program was accredited, like through those various accreditations, mm -hmm. in 1913. At that time, LaGrange College had the distinction of being the only private institution that was sanctioned by the Board of Education, because that's who was offering the accreditation rather than the state um, to offer the summer program. So LaGrange well, College, cool. yeah, we were considered a pioneer in Missouri for teacher education leading to certification. It doesn't really surprise me. Yeah, We've so we always were, had excellent we're trailblazers. faculty in that. Yes, mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, so this is when we became a four-year degree program, and in 1982 then would be the first year we had four-year graduates. Right, that we had students who graduated from our four-year degree program and got certification, and that happened to be in the K-12 music oh, area oh, was interesting. those first ones. And we do have two of those people who are coming to the brunch, which you're going to learn about. Awesome. That's so exciting. So you all, I know, have been extremely busy planning this fun weekend for alumni as well as past and current professors. So let's just dive right in. Tell me what to expect on October 7th and 8th. Maybe first of all, we should say who should come to campus on October 7th and 8th. Jane, you want to talk about trivia first? We, well, we want anybody who earned teacher certification at any time to come or people who received their advanced degrees as well. Oh, okay. Any alumni from our education program. Perfect. We hope they'll Open all to all. And Open all teachers. All. Any teachers who are a part of the teacher ed uh -huh. committee, any of the HLGU teachers who mm -hmm. taught our, prepared our teachers for teaching, our students for teaching. Yeah. Well, and like you said, the music uh, was the first. So like those uh -huh. music faculty that you don't necessarily think of as teacher ed, but right. uh -huh. they would be people that alumni would want to see too. Yep. Excellent. Okay. So trivia. Well, you may know more about this than I do, <laughs> but I know we have some teams for Trivia Night. That's a free event, so we're just hoping people will come. And um, I don't know how many teams have signed up yet, but I, I know. know we have a team. I say. Uh, a lot you of have old, a team. retired people. I, there, it's, it's starting <laughs> to spread out on campus, which is exciting. I think we have about eight or nine signed up right now, but I think there are more 
coming. So that yeah, just gather your team of eight or less. You don't huh. have to have eight, but no more than eight because then it's just cheating. <laughs> <laughs> and that and that will be on Friday, October seventh. At 7 p.m. It's mm-hmm. free, but there's going to be some great prizes yeah. for it's the gonna teams. It's going to be here in the Roland Kiner Center. Right in the lobby of the, right. Yes. Our and uh, I am hosting, so you'll get to hear more from me, which is always fun. But we do have fabulous prizes. Mm-hmm. We'll have a great time. Uh, if you can study up on some HLG trivia, that would probably not be a terrible idea. Mm-hmm. There's some, some, maybe maybe a round or two of that to expect. All right, so that's Friday, but then you have something really fun happening kind of all week and the weekend. We do, from October 3rd through 8th, and there are many different opportunities to sign up. We are having the Case of the Taken Turtle Escape Room. It is a classroom themed, but anybody would enjoy coming. It's for all ages. There is a charge for the escape room, and it's $40 per group. And the group can be up to six people. Nice. One to six people. And it's also held right here in the R Fact. Perfect. So it's just down the hall from actually where this room is located. And it should be lots of fun. We already had beta testing with a yes. group of high school future teachers yesterday. Oh, what a great idea. And they had lots of fun. And then we have another group that's going to be testing it again Missing just to make turtle. sure that... All of us, yes, the case I of the that. taken turtle. Oh, he's it's taken. the he's classroom missing. pet. So, yes, that's Cute. that's the focus of the escape room. So fun. And it's actually a fundraiser as well, It right? is. It's a fundraiser for our student Missouri State Teacher Association group on campus, and they've been doing a lot of work. We've had support from the computer office mm-hmm. also and from David Robarts, who's helped the team uh, to come up with the puzzles and oh, to put it together. Great. So it'll be great. And there, there is a QR code that's being publicized on social media. Mm-hmm. You could also call the university to sign up. But there are the different times that are open are shown in a sign up genus um, link. So that's Perfect. how you sign up. And then right. you pay in cash when you come. Nice. So. Nice. So you can have fun and support. Some right. local students, uh-huh. which who doesn't want to do that? So that's, and that's really all weekend. You said that October 3rd through the 8th. So right. lots of opportunities for that. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and again, that's open to anyone. You don't have to be an education alum. No, we'd or, love for anybody in yeah. the community to come, any yeah. students, group of students, or just group of adults, just anybody who likes escape rooms. Perfect. Should be a fun twist. That does sound fun. I'm signing up. Okay. And then on Saturday, October 8th, is kind of your main event, having a lovely brunch. Yes, that's our main event. We are having a brunch for anybody who shows up, essentially, but we ask people to sign up ahead of time, Mm -hmm. so we have an idea of how to plan. But as part of the brunch, we will just have some visiting uh, among graduates, and we will have faculty members here, people from the Teacher Education Committee, former professors. Nice. We have quite a nice group of students coming, and we had three generous alumni donors send us money to help pay for the event so we Lovely. can make it extra special. Yeah, and uh, it's at 10. Correct? Yes. Right. And the Roland Fine Arts Center. So really, if you can make it to the Roland Fine Arts Center, You're you won't good. miss any fun. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is very convenient. We're and also going to have a special unveiling of our simulation classroom. We've uh, received a grant to make a classroom into a very, one of the classrooms on campus into a something that looks just like a classroom that teachers might be walking into to teach. And so they can practice management skills and all different, um, learn many different things about how a classroom functions by our, in our simulation classroom. So we're going to allow the people in the brunch to come and to see it and have pictures of it. So we're excited about oh, that. yeah, that's so cool. I may have poked my head in a few yeah. times over the summer to watch the progress. Yeah, it's been great. And we've had a lot of donations that went nice. into, into it of people who painted, people who made bookcases, a lot of support from our HLGU friends. Mm. That, and that Jane, has been something for Do you want to go ahead and share who our donors were? I think it's nice oh, yeah. to say who's, okay. who gave us money to support that. 
uh, these are all people who went through our education program and are now in other fields. But uh, Pat and Connie Benson mm -hmm. uh, Jan at Benson Financial Group, uh, Janelle Lee at nice. Hannibal Realty, and Tara Varner at Varner Insurance in Jeff City. Lovely. And they all donated so that we could do something special for the teachers who will be here. That is really yeah. special. So cool. Yeah. And that will their contributions will go to things given at the brunch and at trivia night. So perfect. It's a blessing. Yeah. So such so much fun. And you already mentioned that a few of the members of the class of nineteen eighty two might be in attendance. Uh, any other special guests like past faculty that alumni might be especially excited to see? I mean, Dr. Schaefer, you taught. Yeah, there will be uh, a couple of other faculty members that were in teacher education, and then I think we have some people coming that were in the content areas, nice. like music and um, English, Fantastic. you know, other, te other professors here. So really, mm -hmm. if you're an HLGU education alum, you really don't want to miss this event. That's right. It's going to be so much fun. It's really a reasonable cost. We've tried to keep mm -hmm. that down for people. And uh, it's just going to be a really good weekend. And I think we should mention that we're not going to have a keynote speaker or anything like that. This is just fun, it's entertaining. More fellowship. Yeah, and fellowship. Catching up. And, and we are going to offer tours if, if they haven't been on campus for a while. Excellent. And we're also going to, the bookstore will be open. Oh, so. nice. Yes, I, I, I'm wearing my new sweatshirt from the, right. from the bookstore. They get a lot of my money. <laughs> That's okay. It could be worse. All right. So there are actually other fun things happening that weekend. If an alum comes from out of town or even if they live in Hannibal, but coming back to campus, uh, what types of things are also happening that they can kind of tie in with your reunion activities? Sure. There's always farmer's market going on. Mm. It's a great place to pick up um, some good fall vegetables or fruits. Um, there's something called Second uh, Saturday Gallery Night. And it's from 4 to 7. The women's have a volleyball game, and they just had a win recently. Yeah. It's on Saturday at 11. So yeah. there are lots of opportunities and yeah. activities, and they want to work the escape room into that sometimes. For sure. So it, there's many opportunities to participate, and yet many opportunities just to visit with friends. Mm -hmm. Or if, if you know they bring their families. I mean, right. their family doesn't want to come to brunch. Right. They could go to the volleyball game. Mm -hmm. They could go to the farmer's market while the alum is at the brunch and mm -hmm. visits with friends, but sure. knows that their family is having a good time. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. So education division has definitely grown since 1858. Are there any advancements or changes that you guys as past chairs are especially proud of or, or excited about? I think the simulation classroom is something we've wanted to do for a lot of years. And due to the grant we received from DESE, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, it allowed us to do that, to bring that to fruition. We have um, two new faculty members, not new to HLG, but they just finished their doctorate degrees. Mm. So that's been exciting. We have Dr. Courtney Janes and we have Dr. Melanie Smith. Nice. And um, we're blessed to also have Danette Jarman, and our full-time faculty, and she was a superintendent in a district, so mm -hmm. she brings a lot of experience and wisdom to our secondary program. Um, we're also blessed with several um, part-time people, so I would just say there are quite a few changes in personnel mm -hmm. or changes in the degrees earned, and it just shows how progressive uh, we are in moving forward and giving our students the best education we can. Perfect. Perfect. Was there anything from your time as chair, Dr. I, Schaefer? I think the advancements that we made over the years, just adding content area mm -hmm. certification, mm -hmm. English, biology, math, PE, all of those, rather than just elementary and early childhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, And then when we added the graduate degrees. Right, right. the master's step. programs. And there's so, so many different ways people can take that to mm -hmm. meet the needs that they really want to meet in education. Right. We've recently added uh, special education as a degree, a four-year degree. Wonderful. And then we have a new program that helps paraprofessionals to become certified. It's called Pathways for Paras. Mm -hmm. 
and it allows them to earn credit for their prior experiences in the schools. They have to spend two years like as a paraprofessional or a teacher's aide, and they can then use that to meet the qualifications of field experience oh, and student teaching. Wonderful. So then they don't have to stop teaching to student teach. They don't have to leave their job or leave the classroom. They can work that in. And I mean, they have to work on a contract to sure. show that all of these pieces have fallen into place. But we're really excited to offer that because we have many teachers in our schools who are not certified in mm -hmm. the area. And this allows them to take online classes. It's a fully online program and be able to use what they're doing for for college credit. So, so clever. That's just just started this fall. So, so it's a brand new program. Oh, excellent. And if they have questions about this, they can call um, admissions or contact yes. the actual education division, I'm sure. Right, or the graduate um, office, Perfect. the online office, because the courses are all offered online, or yes, education office. We would love to tell you about it. Great. All right. Well, as two experts at the table, do you all have any advice for our teaching alumni? <laughs> well, that's a tough yeah, she's like, Jess, why? Well, <laughs> I think uh, just to remind them they're doing hard work, but it's good work, and take care of yourself mm. because the students really need you. We're, it's It's not a time that teachers are getting a lot of glory mm -hmm. or a lot of praise. It's a tough time to be a teacher, but uh, it's so worth it. Nice. And I would say as a Christian teacher, um, we have, as we pray for our students, we have the opportunity for God to give us insight into the special needs of mm -hmm. the students who are in our classrooms, because there are children who do have real struggles and come from home lives that can be very difficult. And so um, I think that's a big advantage for a Christian in a classroom to just be able to seek God's will and for God to show them some ways to especially connect with a student or work with a student or um, highlight what a student's need is. And so just the power of praying for your students, I think, is what I would encourage teachers to do and be flexible because <laughs> you're not going to survive in teaching unless you're flexible uh -huh. you've had to, you've gotten that firsthand i'm sure <laughs> a few times a few times all right uh so just something else that's fun while you're sitting at the table uh do you happen to have like a special hlgu memory that you'd want to share with the audience it can be funny it can be sweet well i think the fire was probably oh. Yeah. the biggest memory because so many things changed at that point. That was the first year I taught here. Oh, gosh. I hoping I had <laughs> Welcome to Hannibal the Great. Wow. Yeah. But that changed things. But I think the best memory I have over the years are the students. Mm -hmm. We can think of so many things and um, activities and events that we were part of and still see a lot of students on Facebook and mm -hmm. in person, and it, it's mm -hmm. special. That's why we're looking forward to Saturday. Oh, I'm sure you are. It's going to be like a party over there. Um, I just, special memories are every time that I get an email from an in-service teacher, a teacher who's teaching now, who just says, you know, that idea that was shared, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> it was Yay! like a surprise. <laughs> or just the, the blessing of keeping in contact. Or mm. I have a student that has this problem. Can you help me mm. figure out what to do with them? Um, and those are just special memories to know that they realize we really care about them and we really yeah, care I about their success. That. That's and awesome. so we would continue to invest in them. Mm. So cool. Well, once again, I want to recap. The HLGU Teacher Education Celebration is happening on Friday, October 7th and Saturday, October 8th here on campus. And all of the information can be found on the HLGU website under the calendar or under news and events. We have two spots on the website. It's also very detailed out on the Hannibal LaGrange University Education Division Facebook page. You guys mm -hmm. have done a great job of keeping that up. So if you're not following that and you're an education uh, alum, you need to follow that. That's the Hannibal LaGrange University Education Division Facebook page. And uh, we'd love for you and your HLGU classmates to join us 
it's going to be a really special weekend that is 40 years in the making. And something we yes. didn't actually talk about was you guys are making a directory so everyone can yes. stay in touch. Mm-hmm. Right? Anyone, whether you, maybe you live too far away to attend an event, we have a directory and you can just enter your information and everybody who enters their information is going to get a copy of the directory. It'll be emailed to them. So then they'll have the information that we've gathered. Great. So great. Well, thank you ladies so much for joining me. This has been a pleasure. Anything else I forgot besides? There's still time to sign up. There is still time to sign up. That's right. You're not too late. Come have fun with us. Pass the word. Yes, and please tell your your friends. All right, well, thanks for listening to the Scarlet Blue and You podcast. Remember, keep a song in your heart, preferably the HLGU alma mater, and Hannibal LaGrange in your mind. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.